Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect. Today, we are going to be diving into Ender.io, and we're going to be getting our automated ore processing set up today. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today, we're going to start off with working with some machines. We're going to get some machines going. Also, I, I thought I turned my markers off. Let's go turn these off. I don't know how they keep turning themselves on, but they do. Um, so it's like every time I sleep, they turn themselves on. Let's head all the way down to the bottom of our mine shaft. And what I plan on doing is, like I said, getting started with Ender IO. It's going to take a little bit of resources to get started. I think we have enough iron. We shouldn't have any problems there. But in order to get started with Ender IO, we gotta we gotta get down to bedrock, right? The the new way to get started in this mod is to go all the way down to bedrock. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll get ourselves a pretty decent sized platform down here. Um, there's also ways of automating what we're about to do as well, if you're inter interested in that. Uh, let's go ahead and get this. I hear lava. I hope that doesn't mean there's lava all the way down here. Somewhere. My gosh, how far are we from away from bedrock? I know there's bedrock here somewhere. <laughs> I think we're at Y level 11 is why. Keep going. Oh, wow, draconium. That doesn't happen. And there's bedrock. Okay. So yeah, it does take a little bit to get to the bedrock level. But like I said, that's okay. Once we get down here, though, that's where all the magic is going to happen. So what we can do is let me go ahead and break down through here. Give myself a way to get back up. Is we are just going to light this all on fire, right? Now, I'm going to stand here as this is on fire, and it's going to take a little bit of time. You're going to hear some popping sounds, um, but this is how you're going to get infinity, which you're going to need this stuff in order to make any of the gears or anything needed for uh, Ender.io, which is going to be pretty nice. So there you go. You can see we got our grains of infinity there. Um, I think it's a 50% chance. So if a fire goes out, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the infinity. Also, the infinity is fireproof, as you can tell. So yeah, I need to farm a bit of this, and a good way to farm it is, of course, doing exactly what I'm working on here. So there we go. It's just to create these giant paths and just light it on fire. Uh, like I said, later on, we can get a uh, setup down here that will do this automatically for us. And it's actually not that hard to set up. So in order to get started with our Ender IO stuff, we are going to need a bit of iron. Um, and also some iron nuggets would probably do us some good um, because we are going to need machine casings for each of one of these things. So I'm going to make a sterling generator as our base power source. Um, the sterling gem generator is actually a pretty decent early game power generator. Um, but like I said, we're eventually going to be upgrading to the main sterling generator and completely skipping these ones that we're starting with right here. Um, so we need to make some of these, which is using that infinity that we just got, the grains of infinity. I only have 25 of them, but that should be enough to get us started. We need two for this. And like I said, it's going to require a bit of iron to get us started. I think this is the only one, the sterling generator is the only one that requires a lot of this stuff. I think that requires a piston and that doesn't. So we need two pistons. Um, this one requires a piston. The machine case itself you think each one of these requires that machine case so we have that we need some more iron I have a ton of iron there we go and that should be enough of our cases awesome so we can go ahead and make two furnaces for this guy which would be for alloyer this one's gonna need stone bricks so I actually need to go upstairs and grab some stone. Because that one specifically requires stone. So. I think it required only four, but we're going to grab a bit. There we go. And we should be able to make this one, which is the simple sterling generator. Pop that right there for right now. We need the alloyer, which we're going to need a bucket. It actually consumes the bucket. Um, we can make some stone gears. 
And that should allow us to make the other machines. And then the sag mill. So we have our alloyer and the sag mill. Awesome. And look at all these advancements we get from, from doing these. All right, so if we place this here, we should be able to open this bad boy up and give it some fuel. Now, these use 15 apiece. This creates 30, so this should share evenly, but I believe that this always burns fuel. So this will always be burning fuel. Not exactly the greatest thing in the world. We don't want this to constantly be burning fuel. So we need to be able to upgrade these things. So to upgrade this, we need dark steel and we also need industrial dye blend. The industrial dye blend is gonna be quartz powder. So we know two things we need to grind up. Uh, we need quartz and lapis. So those are things that need to be grinded. Um, and then organic dye here is coal mixed with um, slime. So we need quartz. We're also gonna need lapis ground up. We're gonna need uh, coal ground up. And then we also need this green organic, which we can get from clippings and trimmings. And you can get clippings and trimmings from grass. It's a good, good way to get it is from grass. So I have some grass in my inventory. That's gonna be the first thing I throw in here. All right, so you can set up automation with these machines. So let's go ahead and work on doing that. I think, can these actually, no, didn't think so. Let's go ahead and make a couple chests. Specifically for this. So on the outside, we'll do insert into the top to pull and then we'll push on this side and that will get our clippings and trimming separated. So we know we're gonna need coal. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw coal in there. We need lapis as well and quartz. So I'll take some quartz, throw it there, and then we also need lapis. And then I think that's it for stuff that needs to be grinded up in that machine, right? So we need a bit of lapis. So I'm gonna throw some lapis in there. And then we should be getting pretty close to uh, upgrading the, these machines. We wanna upgrade them as soon as we possibly can. So that's gonna take some time. Um, now, some other things that we're going to need to make, as we've seen here, is we're going to need some dark steel. Um, so to make dark steel, that is done in an alloyer. Um, so we can use steel and obsidian to do this, but really the best way is to go with obsidian, go with pulverized coal right here, and some iron. And to get pulverized coal, of course, we are working on that after the clippings. Um, maybe we should flip the clippings around. Let the coal go first. So let that start pulverizing the coal. And we're going to go down, I'm gonna gain some more obsidian. That's gonna be something that I just have to farm myself. Shouldn't take me too much time at all. And uh, then we're gonna get some dark metal cooking up in here. The same way we're doing everything else. So the next part of this, since almost all of these resources are all nice and ground up now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. It is still processing one other item but we need to start getting this stuff fully processed. So let's take a look here under our alloyer, what it's gonna to take to make industrial dye blend. So let's go ahead and add that over here so we can pull this up. Um, so the main thing we need is this green dye, which is gonna be our clippings and slime. It's gonna require 12 though, so we need to remember that. And then the other part is gonna be this organic dye here, which is gonna require, it looks like if we had an egg, it'd be cheaper on the coal, but we're gonna do six and a slime ball and that should get us exactly what we need so we have our slime balls there of course this is going to make one other piece of dark steel we can go ahead and throw this in here we're only going to need one because honestly we only need the six dye blend that it gives us um at least we're getting started right now later on it's gonna be a lot easier to get to these materials so yeah this has to do its little thing this takes like a second to do this very, very quick. There we go. That got us, uh, that's gonna get us two organic get organic dye blends. We're gonna throw these in here. These are gonna process real quick and that's gonna get us the one. Um, after that, we really don't need any more of that. So there we go. And we're pretty much ready to make this stuff. So all we need now is our quartz and our lapis in our inventory. There we go. I guess we got a skeleton dying over there somewhere. But we should be able to make this powder now. Perfect. So industrial dye blend is a little bit interesting. 
Um, it allows us to craft a few different things. So let's go ahead and clear some of this out of our inventory real quick. Got a whole bunch of mess in here. Um, and let's go ahead and focus on actually upgrading these. So we're going to need some simple machine chassis to do that. And that requires some iron bars, some iron, and of course, some grains of infinity. Now we need to make sure we have enough grains of infinity. There we go. And I'm only going to need three of these. So I'm only going to pull out three because we need to make sure we have enough grains of infinity for our bimetal gears and things like that. So all we're going to do is take our industrial die, throw that in here, and those are going to blend together. And that's going to get us started so that way we can start converting our machines over. And that's really all we have to do. Ender IO is... Some people said it's really hard to get into Ender IO, but I, I think it's not so bad. And there we go. Look at that. Challenge complete. So we ended up completing that, and now we're into our Ender IO machines, and that's going to get us into our main Ender IO machines, and they are beautiful. So um, Ender IO is definitely worth the effort put into the early game in order to get this. And we also have some lovely Enderios, which, when eaten, <laughs> they can teleport us. Um, so be careful while consuming your, uh, your interiors. They are very delicious, by the way. So, yeah, we have some more here. And of course, they are part of a balanced breakfast. And, uh, there's how many, uh, there's the, uh, lovely recipes that's on there. Or I guess you would call that the, uh, whatever that's called. <laughs> now I can't even think of what it's called. The nutrition facts. There we go. All right. So that is completed. We have these, so let's go ahead and just grab all of these machines here. Um, actually, some of these that you see, we have to actually take the stuff out, because if you don't, they will hold their inventory and hold their power. Uh, which holding their power is fine. We're going to use them for crafting. So I want to upgrade this. So we're going to need some of that dark steel that we made. I'm going to convert this into a bunch of dark steel nuggets, and that should help us in making these bimetal gears. So um, we're also going to need to make this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that should be enough nuggets for that. And we have enough grains of infinity because we're going to need two for this, two for that, and two for this one, which is going to be a total of six. So let's go ahead and make our set here. This is going to be our regular infinity ones. And we need six of those. And then what's used for these? Well, those are used to make the dark bimetal. And we're going to need six of those. So we have all six. I have no idea where the mobs are coming from. I have all six of bimetal gears. We should be able to do this now. Um, so we need our simple powered furnaces. It's showing that we can't craft it, but we should be able to. Um, I did go ahead and make another one right here. So let's see. Will it let me? It's saying I can't because one of them. It's a simple sterling. We need an alloy. Alloy. Right. And then the gears. And then the dark. That's what it needed, right? Will it really not let me because I have power in that? Okay, no, this is requiring a powered furnace. Simple powered furnace. Actually, I don't have that. Well, that's a bummer. I guess on this one, I'm just going to go ahead and make the furnaces in a cauldron. That's going to be simple enough, right? So hopefully we have enough cobblestone. Do I even have any cobblestone now that I look at it? No, I don't. <laughs> I have no cobblestone in my inventory. What a bummer. All right, let's just grab some. And we're making three furnaces. I think that's a little bit easier. And there we go. Okay. So the other stuff should be pretty simple. The um, simple, the sterling generator. We should just be able to use the one we had. And that upgrades our sterling generator. And then for our sag mill, we use the one we had. And that upgrades our sag mill. Nice. So now we have all of the same machines, except for these are way more efficient. They will not consume power when the power is not needed, right? 
Our sag mill will still function the same. And there we go. Now, these are gonna require some upgrades in order to even function. Um, so that is another step we have to take. Look at that, this, this one's still configured. It still has the same configurations. How cool is that? Um, we are gonna need to upgrade and make ourselves some capacitors. So a basic capacitor is gonna be some grains of infinity, gold, and copper. And they all need a little bit of the basics, so let's go ahead and get them fitted with the basic. So that's three of them, and you can just click them onto the machine, and then that should start to work. Now this is gonna produce 60, and remember these consume 30 right now when they're not upgraded. So this one will still power both of these at the same time and should provide enough power. Um, and now our efficiency is at 80%, so our efficiency is doing a lot better than it was. But these guys still are gonna be powered. So we need to, to start immediately working on upgrading to a double layer capacitor. In order to do that, this is where the like sort of rabbit hole gets started. We have to use redstone, glowstone, and glowstone dust. All of those are very important. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get like a split of 16 in here for these. And my glowstone, I believe, is upstairs. And there's several ways in this pack you can actually get glowstone. You can actually find just like these plants on the ground that produce glowstone, which is kind of awesome. So there's that one. Eventually, like I said, I've already got the room finished over here. We're gonna start working on soon getting into like refined storage, I think that might be something we can get into. It all depends on uh, what exactly the resource grind is gonna require in order to do that. But we're gonna find out, actually I, I might do RF tools for storage. That might be something we do. Um, it all depends, like I said. So let's go ahead and get into here. So now we have an alloys mode and a furnace mode. So this works as both. I'm gonna leave it in alloys for right now and we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves some alloys produced. And this is where it's gonna start producing the energetic alloy. So that way we can make these machines just a little bit faster, a little bit more usable, and uh, everything's gonna start functioning a lot better. But like for right now, we're still running our main power off of coal. Um, also, we can now start to process our ores without using our smeltery, which is going to be a lot, a lot better because this thing actually alloys things. So we can't actually throw a lot of things in here um, at the same time. Now there are gonna be a, th a few things, I think these, and also we get a bonus output as well. Um, and I think we can go ahead and use some flint for that. Um, so flint together, or actually if we just throw flint in right now, it works. I'm gonna go ahead and use some dark, of that dark steel that we produced. And if I do this, that's gonna give us some dark steel grinding balls. And we can actually throw that in here and this is gonna make this faster for one thing. Um, make it more efficient and is also going to give us a higher output chance. You can see the main output is 135, bonus output a 200%, and then our power usage is going to be less. So we have a 70% power usage um, that this thing is going to be doing. Instead of using 30 RF, it's going to be using um, a little bit less. So that's always a good thing. And you can see we're going to start to see a lot of different ores build up in here. And plus, like this one gives you silver. So lead has a bonus output of silver. So it's a lot better than using this. And you can see we just got four from one ore. So like I said, 200% output. Output bonus, 200%. So sometimes we're getting, or the main output is 135%, but our bonus output is definitely going a lot higher. Yeah, pretty crazy. I think this one has a bonus output of two manually. And right here, our silver is our bonus output. So pretty cool. Like, this is the best way, I think, to process ores, at least right now. And there we go. Look at that. We already got some of these. And, I mean, to upgrade these, we are going to still need the basics, which means we're going to have to farm, I think, some more grains of infinity. Um, so there was that. What are we missing? Gold? Gold nuggets? All right. So the one machine that I want to upgrade first and I recommend upgrading first is, of course, upgrade this first because you don't want to run out of power. Um, and you're going to easily do that if you decide to upgrade your machines before having everything else available. So I always recommend upgrading your power first. So there we go, we can pull that out and put that in. And now we're having 100% efficiency. 
and we're producing 80 RF instead of 60 that both of these require, right? So this guy, you definitely want to upgrade to the maximum first and then start working on these other machines. So right now we don't have too many ender pearls. Um, I have fought a couple of endermen. I plan on next episode, I think we're going to focus on setting ourselves up a mob farm. That's going to be really fun. We did, while we were in the nether, since we did, had to fight so many skeletons, we did manage to get ourselves a drop of evil. And a drop of evil is going to make a mob farm really, really simple, um, which is going to be super fantastic. So let's go ahead and take these ender pearls, and we're going to put them to good use. I need to grab some gravel, some sand, and I think it's clay to make conduit binder. Yeah, sand, and we also need clay, and I think I have clay in here. Perfect, we're gonna be able to make a bunch of conduit binder, which is very useful and super powerful. Um, love this stuff. Cabling in this is so nice. Ender IO is some of the best cabling. My personal favorite. And right now we're gonna be working on the item side of things. So, for that we are going to need iron and an ender pearl. And this together will make us an alloy. That alloy is going to be pulsating alloy. And you can see all we need is the nugget from that in order to make the conduit. So pretty much we're going to get, it uses three. We're going to be able to make nine nuggets per. So we're going to be able to get three different sets of conduits, which is going to be very useful. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to furnace only mode. And this is where we're going to throw our conduit binder in here. And this is going to cook three at a time. So this, for, this uh, for smelter is actually really nice. The alloy smelter will cook three items at a time. So very efficient and still uses the power that we have over here. Also, we have a power buffer that is inside this. So there's our conduit binder. When we break this down, that is going to get us our first item conduit in which I kind of want to use to automate this setup. So let's go ahead and make a couple chests. And this is what we're gonna do. So we have our chest here and here. They're currently set up kind of weird. I'm gonna actually flip these around and then we're gonna set up a little system like so. Um, this is gonna be our input. This is gonna be what is output. This is going to be um, what is going to be cooked next and vice versa. So what is cooked next? We're gonna set this up, furnace only. We're gonna configure this to be uh, pull. This will be push, right? That's going to push the output or push the items. This one's going to be the opposite. We're going to go ahead and flip this around. I'll pull everything out of here and everything out of this. Okay. So there we go. That's done. Let's configure this. That'll be push. And this is going to be set to pull. So what we'll do is we'll put our like ore over here and then inside here we'll put all of our other stuff that can go in here, right? And so what this is gonna do is when we put an item conduit in between, we can disable the item conduit here completely. We'll set this to extract always active and set this to insert. What that should do is pull anything that can go into this chest over here. Um, it's not gonna work. Actually, you know what we should do is instead of having a buffer chest here, Right? Instead of doing it like this, I think we should just straight up have a full chest here, a large chest as our buffer. And then we just put a conduit here. And this will ensure that only items that can be smelted will be pulled out of here. And that way you don't end up with a mess. So we'll set that to extract always active and then this to insert. So now this is being pushed out going into here. And we should be pretty good. The only thing this kind of messes with is us uh, putting a chest on top of this so that way we can uh, auto feed it with coal, but eventually we're not going to use this power source anyways. So yeah, you should see once this gets pulled out that it's only going to be able to pull like cobblestone and those materials out. I'm actually going to move this around, but it will not pull things in like, I don't know, pulverized coal because these can't be burned and things like that. So we won't have to worry about it pulling in our clippings or trimmings or sulfur because the item conduits only pull items that can be accepted into the machine. So uh, it doesn't have like an inventory slot per se um, that could get clogged up. So Ender IO conduits are really nice for that simple reason. And this guy is pretty much automated. So if we wanted to throw any sort of ore 
in here and I think resonating ore can be processed. So some ore cannot be processed um, via gr being ground, ground up. And so we'll find out which ones those are when we see which ones can't be pulled into here. But you see like rutile, that can be pulled into here and that will get cooked, right? So right now we have gold going in and then we should be seeing our outputs being pushed over here. So this right here is full ore processing that is running that is not using our smeltery. So we have effectively upgraded to this. Whereas this is a little bit harder to do um, because we do have alloying that does happen. But this thing is definitely still useful. So I would not recommend getting rid of it. We will still use this later on. It does have very many uses. Anyways, guys, this right here is Ender.io in a nutshell. We have a lot still to do with Ender.io. We have a lot more upgrading to do. Like I said, I really want to get that mob farm set up. I'm super excited to be able to do that. Um, we're probably going to do that next episode. So expect us to set up a lovely mob grinder. I'm super excited, guys. All right. Well, if you enjoyed today's episode, you know what? You guys know what to do. Don't forget to smack that like button if you haven't already. And also uh, give that notification bell a little bit of a ringly ding ding, you know? Uh, that way you guys will be notified when I do post new videos such as this one. And you guys can be the first ones to comment. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.